sound of an engine that makes us excited in the most primal way. We step on the gas and hear that engine roar, and our adrenaline just starts pumping. Oh, oh. Uh, no, what are you doing, man? What do you mean? What's up with your voice? I always sound like this. No, it sounds low and weird. Just be yourself. All right, there's enough. Okay. All right, we ready? Rolling? Sound. <laughs> what about a car makes it iconic? Is it the body, the engine, the sound? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. Well, as technology advances, cars are becoming more efficient in nearly every aspect, including sound. Cars are quieter than ever before because of reasons ranging from government noise regulations to turbochargers, which can muffle engine noise to increasingly insulated cabins. But it's not what we as car fans are used to. Drivers need dynamic feedback. How do you give them that? It's simple, really. Artificial sounds. Your phone clicks like a real camera when it takes a picture, right? And your girlfriend laughs at your jokes that aren't funny. It's pretty likely that the sound of the engine you hear from your driver's seat is not the actual sound your engine is making. It's enhanced. It's a skeuomorph. What's a skeuomorph? Well, it's a derivative object that retains ornamental design attributes from the structures that are inherent to the original like linoleum tile and that weird plastic that looks like leather. Stuff freaks me out. Audio skeuomorphism refers to ornamental sounds that are relics of older technologies. As we advance beyond older technologies like film cameras and hardcover books, transitioning to new tech can sometimes be jarring and cars are no exception. Your car's blinker is an example of this. The sound of the turbines turd. The sound of the turn signal used to be caused by actual electrical contacts and coil springs inside of the dashboard. But since cars have evolved to not use those technologies anymore, those sounds are simulated now. Engine sound enhancement has only become prevalent in the last 10 years, but engineers have been tweaking your car's sounds for a long time. Around 2011, BMW came out with a new gen M5. They swapped out their naturally aspirated 5-liter V10 for a twin-turbocharged V8. Although the horsepower went up, the sound that many had known and come to love went down. The smaller engine and quieter cabin meant that drivers couldn't hear that M5 roar quite like they used to. While less noise might sound like a good thing, you don't buy an M5 to feel like you aren't driving an M5. So BMW's solution to this new quieter cabin was to play an audio track of the engine through the car's speaker. The technology called Active Sound Design is linked out to the M5's ECU and accurately replicates the sound of the engine over the full range of RPMs, torque loads, and vehicle speeds. So while it closely follows the engine levels, it's still just an audio track that plays through your speakers. Volkswagen has their own methods of beefing up engine sound too. VW started using a device called a sound actor, German for sound actuator. This hockey puck shaped speaker is said to amplify real engine sounds from the car. Others say that the noises are just pre-recorded, but Volkswagen adamantly denies these claims. What are you hiding this time, Volkswagen, other than your emissions? Woo! Some diesel cars that Volkswagen manufactures have exhaust sound actors that produce a low-end roar. The sound actually comes from a speaker mounted within the exhaust system and is intended to make the diesel engine sound more like a conventional gasoline engine. Honestly, with like all the emission stuff that came out about them, I really don't know who to believe. Truth is out there, somewhere. Ford has patented their own sound technology dubbed the Sound Symposer. This function works differently than BMW's or Volkswagen's systems. When cruising, the car is quiet. But when the driver smashes on the gas, a resonator pipe connecting the engine bay to the cabin opens up, amplifying natural engine sounds. The best part about this system is that it's customizable. If you like the sound, you can choose when the valve opens. If you don't like how it sounds at all, you can turn it off completely. The Mustang EcoBoost, however, uses a different system to boost engine sound. Active noise control is modeled after BMW's active sound design and plays augmented engine noises through the car's stereo speakers. It also uses noise cancellation, 
which is a whole nother beast. Active noise cancellation employs the same physics of your noise canceling headphones you might have at home. Small microphones record ambient noise from outside the car, then replay the audio, but invert it so it cancels out the outside noise. Um, I'm not qualified to explain how that works because I got my degree in television production and not physics. Much like a meal at a fancy restaurant, presentation is muy importante when it comes to selling cars. The first impression is often the lastingest. You can usually tell the quality of a car before you even turn the engine on. Obviously looks and styling are a big part of that, but a more subtle feature you might not have been conscious about was the car door. You can tell a really nice car from a cheap car by the sound of the door closing. A satisfying deep thunk is preferable to a plastically. Engineers took note of this when new, stricter safety regulations were put in place to strengthen car doors. Extra metal needed to be added to car doors to bolster safety during crashes, and car manufacturers had to strip weight from other parts of the door to balance it out. The result changed the way the car doors sound and ended up making them sound tinnier. From a sales standpoint, the car door provides the first impression of a car to a consumer. If a potential buyer is walking around the showroom, they open up the doors of many different cars before they even have a chance to test drive. So manufacturers can't have a rogue sound messing up potential sales. Engineers got to work redesigning the door sound. Dampeners were used to counteract the tinny sound and locks were tuned to provide the perfect and consumers got that satisfying But it's not always the sound that needs augmentation. Sometimes the feel of shifting needs artificial help too. Ever heard of a continuously variable transmission? CVTs, as they're often called, are found on many, many vehicles nowadays. They're different from a traditional transmission because they seamlessly transition through gear ratios. When using a traditional automatic transmission, it is apparent when you shift gears because you can feel it. There's a drop in the RPM and a jerk from the gear catching, but it's different with a CVT. There are no gears to shift to, so there's no delay or drop in RPM. When CVTs or shiftless transmissions first made it into production vehicles, the feel of it was unsettling for some drivers. The high and continuous rev when accelerating gave drivers a motorboat feeling. So engineers programmed in fake gear changes to appease people that were used to conventional transmissions, even when it served no real purpose. When we think of loud engines, electric vehicles don't usually come to mind. EVs are usually silent or quietly whirring away. This is actually a problem, as EVs are sometimes too quiet to notice when they're coming straight at you. A study done by the University of California, Riverside, found that their subjects had to be 74% closer to hear an electric vehicle over a combustion engine. And another study done by the Guide Dogs for the Blind Association found that pedestrians were 40% more likely to be hit by an electric or hybrid vehicle. I read all the studies done by Guide Dogs. They're great authors. Both the US and European Union have set mandatory guidelines for sound produced by electric vehicles, set to go in effect in 2019. The guidelines state that electric vehicles must produce an audible sound while traveling under 19 miles per hour to alert people in the car's vicinity. At any speed over 19 miles an hour, the wind and tires produce a sufficient amount of noise. Lawmakers are thinking of allowing car makers to let the driver choose between different car sounds which will be either really awesome or just totally lame. What if they charge you for like a cooler sounding car? Like your base model is like this little but then like you pay like an extra $4,000 and it sounds like a Misfiring system. One car trying to purr a little more is the brand new EV from Jaguar. The I-Pace is Jaguar's first foray into electric vehicles and boy howdy it's fast. I'm talking 1.8 seconds from zero to 60. Whew. Jaguar's new technology, the Acoustic Vehicle Alert System, fits in with the new guidelines imposed on electric vehicles. It used to sound kind of like a spaceship. But people kept looking up, so Jaguar had to redesign it totally. Sound is an incredibly important part of the driving experience. It's the whole reason high schoolers put fart cans on their car. It's fun to have something loud. It's like the car is talking to you. 
how far will we let car companies go pumping fake noise into our ears? Maybe it's better not knowing it's fake and living the rest of our days in ignorant bliss. But if you're still watching this, then I guess it's too late for that. All right, guys, I'm walking around the office again. You know what that means. It's time for the sponsorship. This week's episode of Wheelhouse is brought to you by Squarespace. You know what Squarespace is. You've heard it all over. It's the all-in-one platform that makes it easy to build a beautiful and vibrant website for your brand or business. Ferrari, dude. Sweet. Guys, 2019 is gonna be here faster than you know it. And if you're thinking about starting a business next year, there's no better platform for you than Squarespace. With Squarespace, you can build an online store, easily track orders and inventory, and you can track analytics with super easy to use tools. It's so easy, guys. If you already own a domain name, which a lot of you do, Squarespace makes it super easy to transfer that domain name over to a Squarespace site. The name of the game with Squarespace is just, it's easy. Everything is easy to do. Even I, someone who often has problems connecting to a printer can use Squarespace. It's just that easy. Guys, when you're ready to build a website, go to squarespace.com. And then when you're ready to launch that website, go to squarespace.com slash wheelhouse and save 10% off your first website or domain name. Guys, I don't walk around the neighborhood talking to my phone like a lunatic for nothing. I do it because these sponsors help us make these shows. So please use their stuff. All right, bye. Thanks for watching Wheelhouse. We look at the weird stuff in the car world every week. So hit that yellow subscribe button right there. If you like good sounding cars, check out this episode of Up to Speed right here and check out last week's episode of Wheelhouse right here. Uh, follow me on Instagram at Nolan J. Sykes. Follow Donut at Donut Media. Um, be nice, I'll see you next time.